Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Class from Tuesday Live today. It's Saturday, June the 29th, 2013. Our topic today is infusing tech with a common core. Our special guest is Tia Cooper. Our show host, Kim Case, is not feeling well today, so she won't be with us. But I do want to extend again a thank you to our other uh, moderator, Lori Moffitt, who will be helping with collecting the questions and moderating the question and answer period. As always, we send a thank you out to Tammy Moore, who is providing closed captioning for the session. It's uh, great to see you all here just at the end of the school year for us in Canada. And uh, I think you finished a little bit sooner in the United States, but summer is upon us, and we're very happy that you are with us today. Just some quick background. Um, may not know what you look like, and so we thought we'd share a few, few pictures of uh, your moderators for us today. I know Peggy had some fun at ISTE with the pictures, so it was great to uh, put them together with a new slide. We have some great resources for you to be sure throughout the session, and we do keep a live binder for Classroom 20 Live, so you'll find today's uh, resources quickly available in our live binder. And I think Peggy just uh, will type in the chat now and probably during the session often a link to that live binder. Just to, as a good heads up, you'll find the resources that we use for Classroom 20 Live as well. We give you the opportunity for professional development certificate uh, filling out a survey at the end of our session. And sometimes that doesn't work as uh, we'd like it to. So you can remember, if you go back to the live binder, you're going to find access to the survey and the ability to ask for your professional development certificate there. As well as the live binder, we do have a website, live.classroom20.com, and we always ask you to you know, keep in mind that we have archives and resources page where it's loaded with information ideas shared during the session. You'll find the Blackboard re uh, Collaborate recording complete there. You'll find the chat logs posted as a uh, document for you to refer to. If you missed any of that great conversation in the chat, you'll find an MP3 file, an embedded MP4 file that you can take and share with uh, anyone else uh, in, in a web page somewhere for additional professional development. And we, we double up there, you'll find the link to the live binder as well as all the links that are shared in the session today. And I want to send a, a terrific thank you to Peggy because she is the uh, the supporting mechanism that keeps us all going with all the energy that she uses to share with you. So I think you need to recognize how much uh, Peggy devotes to Classroom 20 Live and how much we depend on her to provide uh, the information that she does. So shout out to Peggy and thank you. Now, here's the time for you to get busy. Remember I said to the left of the whiteboard there's some tools. You need to click on the second icon down, it's a little starburst. And pop yourself in somewhere in the world. I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario. I think I'm a little out of place here. So if you're not able to make that happen, then just type in the chat where, where you're from. And most people seem to be in uh, North America. No, we have someone going on in the Middle East. Maybe you can tell us where you are. Great. Thanks, everyone. That's lots of fun. Keeps you awake. So the next uh, task that we have is answering our poll question. So remember, your voting options under your name on the right. It's got a little check mark. So for your first question, can you help me out? Uh, to let Tia uh, have some information about what you do or do not know or do. The first question is, do you use tablet devices or laptops in your classroom? So people are busy clicking that icon to get a, a green check for yes or a red X for no. And wait a little bit to get people a chance to vote. And when you have, I'm going to let you do what the results are by publishing to the whiteboard. So well, three quarters have answered so far, so let's just move on and get the results here. 50% uh, just about are using, 50% uh, of the people voting are using uh, tablet devices or laptops in your classroom, so that's great to know. Just let me clear the votes for now and go to our Next poll question, which is, do you use an online learning environment like Edmodo or My Big Campus? So a green check, yes, red X, no. 
Right, Dottie? So if you're not in a classroom, it's pretty hard to answer that question. But maybe you use it for your own personal use, especially with online uh, learning. I don't know if that's also helpful for Tia to have that question, but she specifically asked if you're using online or an online learning environment like Edmodo or my big campus. Great. Okay, let's take a look at those results. And there, same for those people who have been able to vote, us about 50% are using some form of online learning like Edmodo or my big campus. And I just need to clear the votes and change the voting options. So just give me a second to do that. My mouse is acting up here. Uh, I can't remember how many options, but A to D for sure. So let's go to our next question. Okay, how confident do you feel about implementing the Common Core in your classroom? So you go from A to D for very to not. And if you're not using the Common Core, Common Core don't have a classroom or don't know what it is. That's item D. So. Okay, let's just take a look at the votes now because we we can move on. Let's see where we are. Confident seems to be the greater group, although there's quite a few, a few of us who are not using the Common Core, but T that does give you a quick sampling of the participants in our session today. So this is my opportunity to um, express our appreciation to Tia for being with us today. I know she has a very busy life and lots of things that occupy her, but she's been absolutely super in providing her time and her expertise today. So thank you, Tia, for being with us. And here's a, a, a few things that she um, a few things that I can give you as background for Latia. One thing is that uh, she feels that when technology is integrated into the classroom that all students are really motivated to learn and she is really uh, happy to share with you some of her resources and ideas that will help you integrate technology into the classroom. She is a 1998 graduate of South Carolina State University and a 2008 graduate of Grand Canyon U University with a Master's of Education in Instructional Technology. She currently works for Beaufort County School District as an Instructional Technology Specialist for grades K to 12. Latia has presented at various conferences such as SE Ed Tech, NCTIES, SCEA Common Core, GAATC, and FETC. A lot of an acronyms there. She is a Verizon Think City field trainer and Promethean Social Media Council member and simple K-12 presenter. And she's very excited about her new position as the iLearning coordinator for Beaufort County School District. And she will be sharing her email for you as well as other resources, other resources through, during the session. So uh, thank you very much again, Tia, for being with us. I know you have lots to share, so I'm going to turn the mic over to you now with the beginning of uh, our session for you. And that's the newbie question. What are the Common Core State standards? So, the mic's yours. Please go ahead. Thank you all so much for having me. I love Classroom 2.0. I've been a member since I don't remember. It's been a long time <laughs> in about three different school districts ago, so it's been a really long time. I'm so happy to be here um, to let you know about the Common Core for those of you who are unfamiliar about it with it. But um, the resources I have to share with you span any type of standard or learning. Um, so the newbie question today is, what are the Common Core State Standards? Uh, the Common Core State Standards were developed when governors from the 50 states decided to get together and come together to create standardized uh, learning um, across the United States. And I think this is especially important for families that move around a lot um, with our economy and people changing jobs so much and children being moved around through military means and other ways, avenues. It's very important that when a school teacher um, 
when a school teacher, when a child comes into the classroom, that they can be confident that they're learning the same things from state to state. It's also important um, to have colleges and universities know that all of our students have these basic skills that they come to, regardless, come with, with regardless of what state that they lived in. So the Common Core Standards really help to do that. And they focus on math and English with the integration of science and social studies into them. Um, most of the states have adopted. Um, most states are implementing, well, are starting to implement this year, this coming school year, and fully implement in the 2014-15 school year. So I'm very happy to talk to discuss this with you today. And I just want to give a shout out to Peggy because she has been so great in helping me <laughs> last night getting this all together for you. So she's really been a big help. And to Lorna, thank you so much for that introduction. And I want to congratulate Kim and Classroom 2.0 and their top 10 um, live binders. My live binder, my STEM live binder was also in the top 10. So I congratulations to all of us for um, becoming a live binders top 10 um, presenters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start today by sharing my screen with you all, and I'm going to go into my binder infusing technology into the Common Core. Okay. And I'm just giving you a few seconds to make sure that everyone can see the screen. I do hope that's the case that everyone can see it. Just making sure. Great, awesome. So I'll go ahead and get started. Now what you see on this first screen, um, it says you can join me on at Moto and I'd be happy to have you. So if you're on at Moto, as most of I saw that most of you are losing using some type of online a learning environment, and I just didn't want to limit it to um, Edmodo in my big campus. It could also be Blackboard. It could be any online learning environment. It could be your website page. But um, just the fact that you're using it to communicate with students or with others and professionally is important. So if you want to join me, I am on Edmodo, and that is the code to join the group. Check with Tia. In front of you, you will also see a March 2013 Common Core Resources Calendar. Now this calendar is important because it's got uh, all the resources you can look for on Common Core in here. Um, I tried to do my best with finding great resources for teachers based on the different content areas. So you'll see things for not only math and language arts, but science and social studies and technology. Um, along with general Common Core resources. There's some really great Common Core binders in here. Um, that you can look off. You can print these at any time, and when you click them, uh, if, you, if you download the PDF version, you can just click the links and go automatically to them. Okay? So, uh, as you can see with the live binder, the tabs are off to the left hand side of the live binder. And the first tab under the introduction is the introduction to the Common Core State Standards. Um, and Common Core Standards Visionette. These are videos, um, so when you click them, the video plays inside of the live binder. Um, there's also a website, which is the Core Standards website. This is the main website for learning about the Common Core and why it was created and who is using it and an introduction to the standards. Okay? I've also placed in this tab Common Core for Parents. Why? Because so many parents don't understand why we're moving to the Common Core. They really don't know why um, we're doing this. So in order to help parents understand, this is a guide that you can share with them about what the Common Core is all about, its key features, and what, how it will, will be used in the classroom. Okay? So this is very important and maybe something you want to pull some information from. Now the next tab down is Infusing Technology into the Common Core. This was a presentation that I created that is downloadable at SlideShare. And if you have a SlideShare account, um, feel free to go and download it. So I'm going to start here today with showing you some um, how this, what technology in the Common Core can do 
for your classroom. So um, at the time that I made this, 45 states had, uh, had officially adopted the Common Core Standards, okay? And they said they're built upon the most advanced current thinking about preparing our students for college and their careers, okay? And they're basically there to provide clarity and rigor and um, higher order thinking skills. And I'm not going to read through all of this. You can feel free to read through, through it at your own leisure. And here are some key points in English language arts that you can look at. There are a lot of different things on these slides. Um, when I was doing my research, I looked for the word technology in the Common Core. And here are some uh, three points that the Common Core states on technology, that teachers need to use it strategically and capably. But what does that mean? What does that mean? What does it mean to use it strategically and capably? How do I do that? What resources are out there? Well, that's why I'm here today, is to give you all of those resources that you may use to help you meet those standards. Here are some great websites that are also in the binder tabs to the left, and I'll show you where you can find those later. Um, the great thing about this is that they have the 21st century learners will. What do we need to know how to do? Produce and publish documents. You know, we are living in the online age, so here are some great, um, we need great tools in order to produce and publish documents online. We also need great collaborative and communicating tools um, for our students and allow them to communicate with us not only during the school day but after school hours so we can have 24-7 learning. So I'm going to skip through some of these just to show you this first part. What I've done is gone through K through 12th grade and ELA and math and giving you websites and web tools and apps that go along with each of these. Now, um, here you see websites such as the Right Source, Recipes for Writing, Storyline Online, Starfall, and I have little numbers off to the side. I've matched these with these numbers here. Okay, so it allows you digital tools for producing and publishing writing. Um, for producing writing, the right source is a great source, and I'll open that up in a new window because it has student writing models. So if you're looking for great student writing models, here it is. Um, and you just click on student models, and it has writing models for grades first through 12th grade. A lot of times we tell students, write an essay, write an essay, but we never actually write one ourselves and show to them, so this is a great site for um, showing them how to write. So let's look at report writing on the Aloha State. And this is report writing for grades 6 through 8th grade. And as you can see, this is a student model. The one thing I like about student models is that it gives the student an idea about tone, about word usage. What kind of things should they be using at this grade level? How should my writing look? How should it sound? These are all important when it comes to um, having our students become great writers and then leading them to publish their own materials. So this is called the right source and it's a really great source of information. All right, the next site I'm going to show you is called Recipes for Writing, and I'll let that load so you can see it. And some of you may have seen this before because I've shown this before, but Recipes for Writing is a really great site. Um, it is awesome. They've taken recipe cards, and they've used those recipe cards to create uh, lessons from them. So we were having our students writing a compare and contrast essay. We would just click on it, and you can download these as a PDF. If you have a poster maker, I tell teachers, take that poster maker, run it through the poster maker, and then you put them on the wall. And as you can see here, there's graphic organizers for their work. There's a checklist, and this would be great on the wall in your classroom so that you're saving paper, but the kids can always refer to it when they start writing that compare and contrast essay. And also, think about recipe cards for math. You could do recipe cards for formulas. You could do recipe cards for science experiments. So don't only limit it. You could create your own. And I like the recipe because our lives are full of recipes. If you think of our life, every choice that you make, every all the ingredients we put into our own lives, and we get a product from it. And I think of our students' lives like that. Everything that they do now will affect their future later. So when you explain them to, to explain it to them this way, this is a great, great um, idea. 
that maybe you can modify to fit your classroom. So that's recipes for good writing. I'm going to move ahead in the binder tab to grade two. Now these aren't necessarily grade specific. Let me say that first of all because I don't believe in grade levels. And the reason I say that is because any teacher who's taught a while, you know that you have kids who span grade levels. When I was in sixth grade, I was reading at a 12th grade um, level. So, you know, you'll have kids on different reading levels, math levels, and you'll need to provide information for all of them. So I say you know your students best, so you decide which one that you would like. Um, you decide what tool is best for your students. Don't be so hung up on grade level. Okay, this is an awesome, awesome site. It's called GCF Learn Free. I love it, I love it, I love it. If you haven't seen this site before, you need to check it out. It has, as they say, free online classes. It's not really, it doesn't really feel like a class. Um, you can go through the video modules, and I'll show you how you do that. First, I go back to the first page over here, and I click on all topics. And when the, all of the topics that come up, you're going to see if you have tablets in your class, and I thought most of you have tablets or laptops, but even if you don't have those things, guess what? This is, all of these things are great for the interactive whiteboard. So hopefully you all have interactive whiteboards <laughs> or just the one computer. Whatever you have, you can make this website and all the websites work for you. So as you can see under all topics, you have the Apple, um, iPad basics, computer basics, you have Google. I know our school has, our school, our school district, Beaufort County in South Carolina has become a um, Google and education um, school district. And this is so great. I showed the teachers this yes year, um, last year. Google Drive and Google Docs. This will take you through the students through learning Google Drive and Google Docs. So even if you don't know how to use it well, guess what you can do? You can put them on here, they can watch the videos, or you can just start the lessons, like it's creating a Google Doc. And this is so easy. And guess what? It's all printable. There's printable versions of this, and I say print. But honestly, I don't print these. You know what I do with these? I, I click the printable version. And because I'm using Google Chrome, it allows me to save it as a PDF. And if your kids have Google Drive accounts, Google accounts, you can even share it and send it to your Google Drive by hitting print. You can also upload these to online learning um, places. And then that way you don't have to use any paper. But these are great because it takes the students through the steps of learning how to use Google Drive and Google Docs. I just think that this is an awesome site for learning how to use technology. So I want to back up a little bit because I need to go back to all topics again. I hope you check that part out later. But there's something on here called, um, they also have social media and Microsoft applications. And I, had, I met a career and technology teacher who is teaching job skills, look at all the different job skills from resume writing, salary basics, you know, some of us might want to that, <laughs> workplace basics, gaining job skills, and they have great modules with this. You will not be disappointed. You just won't be. And any of you curious about your Outlook, if you use Microsoft Outlook, I know we do in our school district, if you're curious about how to really get into those features and share that calendar, here it is for you. Um, also down at the bottom, assistive technology teachers, this is great for you because look at everyday life, how to use an ATM machine, cash back, checking your receipt, doing your taxes, grocery list, how to use a microwave, how to measure, all these great tools. And then here again on the social media side, Pinterest one-on-one, -on -one, Twitter one-on-one, -on -one, Internet basics, Facebook one-on-one, -on -one, all the things that you can share with someone, and this is great stuff. It's absolutely awesome. And if you are a reading or math teacher, they also have some areas for reading and math. If you click on reading, and you're, especially for ESOL, they have, I already speak English and I'm learning English. I absolutely love it. And you can click on any of the languages. So I'm going to click here for the Spanish languages. And... It has so many different activities in here. They're all so interactive. Um, 
it has had, you know, having a conversation, art, finance, family, um, geography of the world, colors. So if you were going to learn the colors, which is something that most people start off learning when they learn a uh, different language, they have a word explorer, a text explorer, a video dictionary. Isn't that awesome? And fill in the blank to help them practice it. I thought this was awesome for um, teachers. So this is something that you might want to look at sharing. I have spent too much time on this website, so I hope that you all get a chance or you can to go look at this. Um, it really does meet a lot of different needs and basic needs for your classroom, okay? So I'm going to head on back to the live finder now because <laughs> I spent too much time there. And I want to go to the side panels. And you can look through this later. It has both the math and the um, technology. But I want to go back to the side panels. On the side panels here, we have Common Core ELA standards. These are the written documents um, in PDF form that they came out with that I just don't like looking at because it's very hard to read the standards this way on this PDF. So I'll show you a great tool where you can find the standards, the Common Core standards, easily. So let me take a look at that. So these are the standards. If you want to download them, they're right there. Um, I've also put some publishing tools here, keyboarding, why digital writing matters under that. Um, here's also the math standards. And then Common Core Digital Resources. This is where you'll find all those digital resources about the Common Core. Okay. Now, on this main page, as you can see, there's some different digital resources here. If you scroll down, things for blogs, bookmarking, Edmodo, Gloucester, Google Docs, all those great things, online survey tools, Picasa, um, using Skype, all those different types of tools integrated with the Common Core. But to the left, you'll have all these different websites, such as Achieve the Core. That's a nice website. Hopefully it comes up. Okay. It says, steal the tools as free high policy resources for educators to implement the Common Core state standards. You also, that's a great site. That's called Achieve of the Core. Um, and you can browse through it at, at any time. Pearson has done a great thing. They have webinars on the Common Core. They explain the Common Core. They go really in-depth with it. So that's a great site. It's called Pearson. Comment should come up in a moment. Okay, there it is. And you can look at the webinars, and they have webinars that you can view on demand right now about the Common Core standards, okay? Um, and all of these sites on the left are great, 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 great sites for learning about it. Um, Common Core Resources from Pinterest. I hope a lot of you are Pinterest addicts like I am. I love Pinterest for everything education. Oh, my gosh. If you don't know about Pinterest, you must get Pinterest. It is the best site for learning about anything. You can look into someone else's class else's classroom and see their bulletin boards and everything they're putting up and what they're using. And it's just, I mean, it's just heaven. I just love it. Of course, I love it for other things too, but I love it for education. So that's the Common Core Digital Resources tab. We're going to scoot down to the tab that everybody's been waiting for, which is Great Technology Tools. I had it listed before as More Technology Tools, but we're going to call it Great Technology Tools. And right now, to the right in this big area, you'll see If It's Not Free, It's Not For Me, which is another binder of mine. I don't want you to focus on, focus on that right now. We're going to look at the tools to the side right here. The first one we're going to look at is ReadWorks. ReadWorks. If you don't know about this site, I need you to know about it. It's so awesome. I love this site. It's free to join and download resources. It's really great. Um, there's over 1,000 free nonfiction passages from math, science, and social studies. I showed this um, uh, two weeks ago to some of the teachers in my district, and they loved it because they have to do something called TAP. On, uh, for TAP, they have to have nonfiction passages. And guess what? ReadWorks has those nonfiction passages. So they'll click on Get Reading Passages, and they'll type in their keyword. Um, a lot of them type in weather. We always search for weather <laughs> in science. 
And I tell my teachers, my high school teachers actually use this because, again, you have kids who are on lower grade levels. If you're an ELA teacher, you love this because it has Lexile levels, it has the Fontes and Pinnell level, um, it has skill and strategies that you can search by. But I love this because it has um, question sets. So we can look at this climate, an introduction to climate. This is a nonfiction passage. Um, you do have to be logged in to download. So you click it, and it actually has a passage and a user, a question set that goes along with it. Oh, and I'm not logged in. Isn't that nice? <laughs> that happens sometimes. But I promise you this is nice. And you can download it in PDF form. Most of them come in PDF, and they're not changeable. Some of them come in Microsoft um, Word, so um, they can't be manipulated. But um, most of them come as a PDF. You can download the PDF with the question set that goes with them, and it gives you the assessment questions and answers. There's about maybe five um, five to ten questions, depending on the grade level. Um, it gives you vocabulary, uses word in the sentence, who, what, when, and where, and why. It's just a great, great, great question and passage set. So you know what I told my teachers to do? Hey, and we're in a Moto School District, so my teachers go and they download the PDF, they upload it to Edmodo, they type the questions into the Edmodo quiz generator. So they've never used a sheet of paper, and um, the, quiz read, the kids read the passage, and then they go on. I, I call the um, passages e-sheets now, not worksheets. They're e-sheets. So remember that. You're no longer doing worksheets. You're doing e-sheets, okay? So um, write that into your lesson plan. <laughs> but uh, it's a great way of um, the students actually having their work later on to review and look at. Because a lot of times when we give them a paper worksheet, what do we do? We take that worksheet back. But if we put it online on our website, if we put it in Edmodo, we put it in My Big Campus or Blackboard, guess what's going to happen? Yeah, they're going to go back and say, hey, you know, what did we do in class today? What did you learn at school today? Well, you know, Mom, we read this. This was so interesting, you know, and they can go back and pull it up. They can look at it. So think about um, using uh, sites like this in that way where you upload the documents so the students will always have a reference point to go back and look at it. And again, the assessments are provided. Um, also, they have standards and program alignment. So if you're that ELA teacher and you're looking um, to align your standards, let's see if I can scroll all the way down here. Hold on one second for me. Um, there's a little button here called Align Now. You click that button. And it will take you to the Common Core Standards. Um, and you can search by grade level. And guess what it tells us? It tells you which stories match your um, grade level, all these different stories, passages, and units. So if I want to look up grade 6, maybe I'm looking for something um, in grade 6 ELA. I just hit Go, and it will change it for me. And I see that all these different units can be taught. Uh, a Wrinkle in Time, Sammy Keys in the Hotel. They have all these different units. They have all these different texts that you can use to teach that Common Core standard. Isn't that nice? Because now you used to go and um, you used to just, you know, I've got to find something to fit this standard. Well, guess what? This will help you out immensely. So I really hope you love this site. I love it. Um, if you're a math, science, or social studies teacher and you're looking for passages, I mean, everything from the Constitution, I mean, just put a word into that keyword area and nonfiction passages and you will get something. I guarantee it. Okay, enough about that. <laughs> Let's go on to my next favorite, which is Learn Zillion. And just in case all of you know, I love all of these websites. So if you hear me say I love, love, love this, well, guess what? I love them all, so pay me no attention. But I love LearnZillion. If, you're, uh, if you have a Google account, any Gmail account, you can log in automatically. You don't have to create a username. So if you don't have a Gmail account yet, please get a Gmail account because the next few things that we're going to log into, you just log in automatically with that, and it automatically gives you access. There's no signing up. Your students, if they have access to Gmail accounts, it's the same thing. So this is awesome. And why do I love LearnZillion? I love LearnZillion because you can find the uh, lessons to meet your common core. You can download these presentations. You can manipulate them and change them. You can, they have videos for your students to view. It, um, it works on the iPad. There's an app for that 
there's an app for the Learn Zillion. Learn Zillion is incorporated into Nearpod. For those of you who have iPads and Androids, it's incorporated into there. So it's really, really, really a great site. So I'm going to pop this out big so I can log in and show you guys what's going on. So here's my teacher login. I just click the teacher login button. And this site is created for, um, by teachers. They take teachers over the summer and they have them do um, video lessons for it. And here I'm going to click just log in with Google and it asks for access to my it asks for access to my account, and there I'm automatically logged in. There was no typing of usernames and passwords. Gotta love that. So I want to go to the Common Core Navigator here, and guess what? I'm on K through eight math, and anytime I'm going to go to eighth grade math over here, and here are the standards. So I'm looking for expressions and equations in eighth grade. I'm going to click here. And then here's expressions and equations, and here are lessons. If you see a folder, that means it has a lesson. So here over here under congruence and similarity, there is no folder. That means that the teachers haven't created that yet. And if you sign up for this, you'll get an email where they say, hey, we need teachers to participate. They do pay you over the summer to do this, so it's really great. But you get to create these great video lessons. And so then I'm going to click on a lesson. You know, and here is represent repeated multiplication using exponents. Think about the new teacher to a subject who needs this. Think about uh, someone new to a school who hasn't ever taught before and they need some help. This is a great way to get that help. So these are the lessons, and you can look through the lessons, and it tells you that there are 10 lessons in here. And we like this because we're chunking the material. I'm not saying it's going to take you 10 days to teach the lesson, but the lessons are in small doses. Okay, and they're mostly created by the same people. As you can see, Jeffrey Deserich created all of these lessons. So let's look at his lessons. Now the lessons come as a video. You can also sign your kids up for Learn Zillion. It's up to you. It's also available through Edmodo. I should say that too. So if you're on Edmodo, it's available through Edmodo. You can assign them up. Um, you can assign your students up through here. Um, it comes with a video lesson, and then it has an assessment that the kids take. You can also just click for a quick code. The quick code gives you a little letters and numbers that you can put into a moto or big, my big campus and tell the kids, hey, do this activity. And, you know, this is great for homebound students. Um, that I know a lot of times teachers are so overwhelmed that they can't get um, materials to the homebound teacher. Well, this is a great way to supplement that. Hello. You've got English and language arts. So what you, I mean, English, <laughs> language arts, and math. So what you can do is give them access to this, and then the home bound teacher can help instruct them that way. So on the top right, you see it says here slides, okay? So you can hit the download button, and you can download the slides immediately. Oh, my gosh, this is so nice, and it's free. Hello. So you can download the slides. It takes only a second. They open up in Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, and it's really great. They also have a Spanish video lesson. Yay! I mean, this is so great. Um, there's a notes template here for all of that, and these are set to, to meet the Common Core. And then they take you through where you can launch the tour and have, find different ways you can use the lesson in your classroom. There's parent letters that you can send home. I mean, this is just awesome. Um, I love this tool. I think it's a great tool. If you're looking at English language arts, you see here they have, eventually they'll have K through 12th grade. Um, they're still working on some of these. Um, as you can see, 9th and 12th grade, they're still working on all of those. So if you're a high school teacher and you want to make some extra money, there you go. Uh, I'm sure there will be some new ones by August or September because teachers were working this summer on these um, lessons. So um, they have quizzes and playlists. You can set up classes. It's awesome. Um, awesome, awesome tool. So enough about Learn Zillion. Let's go to the next one, which is Brain Genie. I also love Brain Genie for math and science. Again, great for homebound students, but my teachers um, in middle school math, they use this. And one of my teachers brought her kids up 20 points for math testing. Oh my goodness, I was so proud of her. She said the kids loved it. It worked on the iPads with no problem. Um, there were short videos, less than a, about a, maybe 
no more than a minute and a half long that taught them the skill. It was simple. There was no, you know, really gaming playing. It was just simple. It helped them learn the idea. And she brought her kids up 20 points. And those kids did spectacular in her class. And she, they did so well that they made all the other math teachers do it. <laughs> But this is great for those, I would take maybe three or four kids who aren't on grade level in math and put them on this and help move them up. And these are Common Core aligned, so you can search by standard. Um, of course, you can see here, here's 6th through 8th grade science. Um, you can click on one of these um, and get a variety of things. They have 1st through 8th grade math, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Pre-Cal, Pre-Calculus, 6th through 8th grade science biology and chemistry. I really can't go through all of these because I have some other great things I want to show you, but you've got to check this out. Brain Genie is great for that. And anytime you click on one of these one of these levels, let's say multiplication and division, it has a short video for the students to watch and it has a little practice modules for them to go through. And it has about five questions at a time. It gives you all the progress monitoring info that you need what they master, what they didn't master, how long it took them to master. Everything is built into this tool. You just need to upload them, give them a username and password, upload them, and it's done. And I say, you know, you may not do this with all your students, but what about those kids who you need to move ahead, those kids who are gifted in your classroom? This is a way to give them tools, um, give them um, math instruction and science instruction and move them ahead in class. So. If you have technology, differentiate, differentiate, and then you can also use this as a, um, as a, um, and for inter for the interactive whiteboard to help you teach. So here's the little practice questions, but of course, in the real modules, once you go into them, you'll be able to do about five questions in a row. It'll tell you whether you're right or wrong or not. I love Brain Genie. Love, love, love Brain Genie. All right, the next one that I want to take you to is Flip Snack. And you know, I talked about earlier about publishing your documents. Well, if you haven't used Flip Snack, you should. It's lovely. You can create your own flipping books. I said that last week, and everyone busted out laughing. I guess it sounded like a little crush, but <laughs> I thought it was funny. But anyway, um, you can create great flipping books, and it's free. It's free. It's free. I know. I just love this stuff. Um, it's embeddable. It's downloadable. You can do multiple, combine multiple PDFs and to, to create one handbook. So what I want you to do when you go to the site, click on uh, Flip Teaching and click See How It Works. And when you click there, check out this just um, this anatomy book down here. It says anatomy worksheets, but we're going to call them e sheets or e books, of course. Remember that e books, e sheets. <laughs> So it will open and load in the book. Actually, the book pages turn, and you hear the sound of the book turning. Because so many kids get frustrated because they do photo stories and movie maker and uh, PowerPoint. And who doesn't get tired of that after a while? But guess what? You can take any of your Google presentations, your PowerPoint presentations. You can even create picture books using images. So you can take those presentations. You can save them as a PDF. And then you upload it to FlipSnack, and you, great, you get a great flipping book. So here is the anatomy book loading. I already have for you a student flip book guide ready, and I'll show you that in a minute. But here's the flipping book. All right, let me stop saying it. And you just click to read, and you can actually zoom in on these. This is just an example, but you can zoom in, you can download them, you can make them downloadable. What is great for a school newsletter or for your web page newsletter or for a company newsletter? This is great stuff. So major organs of the body, and then they have the worksheet in here. Isn't that awesome? Okay, and if you make it downloadable as a PDF and you have notability on your iPads or your tablets, guess what? You can annotate over that, and the student just saves that information and shoots it back to you. So this is awesome, awesome. So I know some of you are just ready to create one right now. And it's easy to create. It only takes three steps to creating a flip snack. Once you log in, you click New Flip. You give it a title. You give it a um, description. And then you upload your document. Once you've uploaded your document, then you customize it. You can give it coils. You can have hard covers. You can change the color. You can upload your own cover. And yay, you can upload your own background, too. Um, 
It's awesome. So I'm going to show a flip stat that I created from, uh, let's see, from the story of Christmas. This was one that I did from PowerPoint. It took me five minutes to do it. I used PowerPoint to do it. I just saved the PowerPoint as a PDF. And again, that's my background that I added. And here's my flipping book. So it will load in a minute. And as you see to the left, I have the student flipbook project guide all ready for you. So if they know how to use Google presentations, PowerPoint, or any other type of presentation material, and they can, they can save it as a PDF. Or if they've just taken images, say you all went on the field trip and you just take different pictures, you can upload all those pictures and create a flip book of the field trip. So let's look at this. I did this in a few seconds, and this is all PowerPoint. It doesn't take that long. And I got all the pictures from the clip art in Microsoft. So isn't this great that you can do a flip book in one, two, three? Okay. So I hope you like that. And again, here's the student flipping book project guide. And it says how to create flip books and magazines. And that's what you call them. You really call them magazines, especially if they're older kids in high school. You want to tell them they're creating a magazine. So here you go. And it allows them to publish the documents, publishing. You know, so when they publish it, you can put it in Moto and publish it there for all the other students to see. You can have them put it on a website. It's just a great thing. So here um, are the directions. And at the bottom of this, there are still links to storyboards, free images, and other examples. But I have to tell you this. Um, I always say you need to have them storyboard something like this first. That is very important. Never leave that out. It's always important to have them write things down and plan it out before they do the technology. I don't really care what it is. It's always important. Um, paper is not dead, <laughs> okay? You still need it in some cases. Also, there's Screencast-O-Matic. Now, if you're really looking to flip your classroom and create uh, videos, this is a great tool. And the reason that I like it is because you can just hit Start Recording, and it automatically starts recording your screen. And a little yellow um, circle will come up at the end of the video when you're done with that. Your last um, video recording will, it actually follows um, where you're going on the page, I should say. So I really like Screencast-O-Matic for that because a lot of times it's hard for us to follow the mouse. As you can see, I'm moving the mouse around. But with Screencast-O-Matic, because there's a yellow circle around the mouse, it keeps the learner's eye where you want it to go. So there's your Screencast-O-Matic. And then here you can also download and install it just in case you don't have Internet access, but you really need to do a screencast. You can do that. Now, Screencast-O-Matic allows you to upload to YouTube. I have my own YouTube channel, so that's the way I embed videos. I can upload um, my screencast to YouTube and get the embed code link, or I can download it and upload it to another platform like SchoolTube or VMO to do that. So I just love, love, love this tool. All right? That's Screencast-O-Matic. The next one is Screen Leap. I don't know if you've seen this, but if you're a BYOD and your kids are going to be bringing their own devices, their Kindles, their iPads, their other Android devices, their smartphones, well, ScreenLeap is for you. ScreenLeap provides you with a way of capturing all your students' devices and uh, having them only look at what you want them to see. Now, it's not necessarily interactive, but the great thing about it is that because our students can sometimes be off task, this allows you to see the number of students that are in the screen leap with you. So when one of them drops out, you will know. And also, it allows you to share your screen. So let's say you have something on your computer that you want to share with them on theirs. You can do that. And screen leap even gives you your own URL. So my screen leap, for instance, is screenleap.com um, backslash Tia underscore Cooper. And I've used that to share my screen with teachers. And they absolutely love it because they're like, oh, you know, I can chunk a part of my lesson. I can have them come in, get their tablets out. I can take them to where I want them to go. I can, and this is also great. If your interactive whiteboard bulb ever blew, this is what you needed because you can share your computer screen with your kids and not have to have the interactive whiteboard um, on. So this is great. Um, I really hope you take a look at it. It's an awesome um, thing. So that's Greenly. Um, also, as I said, Pinterest is great for the Common Core. Um, 
I've also, when you click this tab, the Pinterest tab, you'll see um, some bundles I created with, with, with some great Common Core sites on Pinterest. So here's some Common Core links, ASD, uh, ASCD Common Core standards, but there's lots of different ones. There's Nikki Robinson, she's great, and she has a lot of Common Core resources on hers. And um, these are just some great resources for the Common Core. So take a look at those. But I also found a great thing called Bloom's Taxonomy in Pinterest, which is also great. And I'm um, going to rush through this a little bit. But here's Bloom's Pinterest. And it shows you how to use Pinterest using Bloom's Taxonomy. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I mean, this is great stuff right here. So it tells them how to create, evaluate, analyze, apply, understand, and remember. Wouldn't this be a great activity? I think this is awesome. So they could go through here and, you know, how to remember, how to understand, how to apply, and see if they can do all of these things and create a Pinterest board that uses Bloom's taxonomy. Okay? Um, also, um, below more technology tools, there's the Teaching Channel Common Core. I love the Teaching Channel. Oh, my gosh, I love this. They have a great video on here called Kick Me. And it shows the teacher, teacher kicking the, um, teaching the lesson um, using the Common Core standards. And let's see if I can find it. I think it's on here somewhere. Oh, here it is to the right. It's called Kick Me. But the great thing about this lesson and the one thing I love about it, she gave you the lesson plan. She gave you the template. She gave you, I mean, everything that you would need to uh, create this lesson, it's on here. And so the video is going to start, but I'm going to stop it. Well, let's start. The length is a five-minute video. Here's the Common Core Standard. It's a vocabulary one. And here are the details. And then here, down here, you have the supporting materials. You have lesson plans. You have the smart, smart notebook file for it. I mean, that's awesome. You have the worksheet. You have the transcript. This is a really great lesson. It's called Kick Me. And basically, you know how they used to have the little sign that you put on someone's back and it said kick them? But, you know, it said kick me. It's that same thing as that they have vocabulary words on them. And they get to move around the classroom. I thought that was awesome. The teaching channel has lots of different resources like that. Um, there's another one over here on the left. I want to show you Ed Camus Common Core Conversation. If you're looking for... Um, the Common Core, it has some great things on here. Um, and as you can see, she has dozens of resources, social studies, science, art, and music. Um, Christina Howitz, there's some great things on here for ELA, ESL, physical ed, math resources, business, computer technology, world languages, anything that you want. It's a really great site. This is called Ed Canvas, the Common Core Conversation, or you can just go to commoncoreconversation.com. Another one that I really love is USD Technology, USD 473 Technology. They have it by grade level, and when you click on a grade level, they give you some tech tools to go with technology standards and the Common Core standards for reading and math. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's USD 473 Technology, and I'm running out of time. <laughs> the next one I want to show you is the Academic Arts in the Common Core. If you're wondering how Academic Arts um, goes with the Common Core, this is a great, 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 great binder for you to look in. Um, and some of the, um, one of the sites is Education Closet. They take science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math, and they put it all together. And they have made lessons by grade level that you can use with your arts teachers and with your science, technology, um, English, math teachers. And here are all the lessons. It's just some great, great, great materials in here. Um, and so it's almost time for me. I have one minute left, so I hate to do this. Um, that's Education Closet. It has some great stuff. Um, I have a monthly website calendar, and I want to tell you all this before we. Um, it's time to end. Um, when you go to the website calendars at um, techwithtia.com, you can sign up. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, I can change that. You can sign up to receive my calendars. Just for you guys, I finished the July calendar this morning, so you're the only one to know about this right now. <laughs> so if you go to my website and you click on calendars, you're going to be the first ones to download the July 2013 calendars. Now, this is just for teachers. These are all the greatest resources I think you can use. It's called the Digital Teacher Resource Edition. Um, and as you can see here, 
Um, you just download it and you can print it off. You can share with anyone that you like to. But the links in blue are clickable, and these are all I explain how you can use them. I give you some sites where you can find great things at. So you can download that. Um, here's also the June calendar that was for students, but it's still got great, great, great resources. And all of my calendars dating back to 2010 are on here. So if you see any calendars you want to download, there's the Common Core, please do. And feel free to sign up. You just join the mailing list, and I'll send one to you in your um, inbox every day. You'll be the first ones to get it. But you guys are the first ones to get my July 1st calendar two days early. So please enjoy it um, and download it when you get a chance. Um, so, and you will find that I've got to change that link, or you can just go to techwithtia.com and it should come right up. Um, or you can click inside the binder. I think I do have it here also. Okay. Um, and I appreciate you all listening. I hope it wasn't too much all at the same time. Um, I want to take this and turn it on over um, back to everyone. Uh, yeah. I, I could take very little yeah. time with this session because I know people have really enjoy what you're sharing. I just kind of maybe switch up something to talk more. I usually do the question and answers right now, but it is the top of the hour. So I thought I would just quickly give our closing remarks and then go to questions so those people can stay and want to have the questions answered. I think uh, Lori was co collecting a few for you there, but if I do the closeout, um, it, it'll just free up everybody to um, follow their own Saturday plans as the best they can. So <laughs> okay. thank you. And I'll come back to you in just a second. And just to let you know, this is the uh, summer break time for all of us at here at Classroom 20 Live. We will not have any sessions until the 3rd of August. So uh, this is a great session to, to end off with because you have so many great ideas and things that you can be investigating throughout the summer. But uh, Future of Education is still going on quite uh, well, and Steve Hargadon will be presenting uh, the next four shows. The first thing on July the 2nd with Matt Hearn on de-schooling, uh, July the 9th with Will Richardson on Y School, July the 10th self-organizing learning environments with Black Mountains, S-O-L-E, July 30th, Don Winkle on student entrepreneurship and the real swift learning. So lots of great shows to enjoy throughout July. Uh, a quick reminder about uh, accessing the link for nominating a featured teacher. We will be looking for a featured teacher nomination in August. Uh, survey we talked about before. Someone new to the session might not know that we do give out a professional development certificate that is yours to use. We have no accreditation, but it is an indication that you have participated in the session, or you can ask for a certificate as well for any uh, recordings that you did happen to use. So if you want the uh, certificate, we ask you to fill out the survey at the end of the show to give us feedback, as well as to record your uh, email address where Peggy will send the appropriate uh, professional development certificate. And um, quickly moving on, just a reminder that we do have, excuse me just a second. Uh, a, YouTube, a YouTube channel with so iTunes U, a video and audio collection for you to share. If, if you can't grab that link, which I know you can't, you'll find that in our uh, resources in our live finder. And we do have an RSS feed, so you can capture our blog post, because that's our archives of resources. It's actually a blog post that you can keep up to date by uh, accessing the RSS feed. So, we're going to finish off the show with some questions and answers, but I would like again to express our appreciation to Tia for taking the time and energy that she uh, so willingly shared. A great resource. People have really enjoyed uh, the presentation today. A thank you to Steve Hargadon, who's the founder of Classroom 2 Zero Live, Teacher 2, Future of Education, and Web 2 Labs Project, to Weebly for, for providing our website, for Blackboard Collaborate, for giving us the environment with, in which to share our. Uh, shows with you. So I'm going to head back to Lori now and ask her if there's any questions that you fielded. I know someone had raised their hand, but uh, let me give you the mic, Lori, and uh, let me know what you've got for us. Yes, I do have some questions that I captured, Lorna. Um, let's see. It, you shared a CCSS document for parents. Is there one in Spanish? 
I don't know, but I can find out. I don't know, but I will find out and add it if there is. That was an early question. Um, someone typed in chat, I still worry about plagiarism. How do you provide such a huge resource of exemplars? And this was the writing exemplar group, I think, and not have them show up as your student submissions? Mm, that's a good question. Um, hmm. <laughs> there is a, I've got to look in my binder. There's one in the, if it's not free, it's not from I think it's a plagiar plagiarism checker that you can use mm -hmm. check for plagiarism. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the name of it. I will have to check in there and see. Um, Oh, what's that? Right With Peggy type, you can always do a Google search for yeah. the um, for for text from their paper. Yes, and there is a great one out there that I was yeah. using, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, find it real quick as possible. Oh, it's the dustball.com. It's a plagiarism checker. Hmm. And okay. it has some. It's, it's really easy. I like how I like the look of it. Mm -hmm. um, you just cut and paste your student's paper or homework assignment into it. It's called dustball.com. Oh, thank you. Somebody mm -hmm. asked what your name was in Edmodo when you shared the the follow code. Oh, it will either be it's, it'll be Tequitia. Or mm -hmm. um, I have two at Moto <laughs> logins, one from my school district, which is just the regular Latia Cooper, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. the, which is the one I use in my district. But the Tech with Tia one, which is the one I use with you all, you can just type in Tech with Tia or Tia Cooper, mm -hmm. and it will link to me. And I okay. pretty much share everything I share with Tech with Tia. I do still share with um, my teachers in my district. So whichever one you connect with me at, it'll be on both pages. So. Okay. But the most important thing is to just to join the group. Right. There, right there. The websites that you shared, are they free to only US schools? No, they should be free to everyone in the world. <laughs> no, they're not okay. they're, they're they're for everyone globally. Good. Do you have a Digo account? Do I have a Digo account? No I yeah. Well, you know what? I probably do. But it's one of those things where I haven't had time to use it, but I probably do have uh -huh. an account, and I just have not used it um, yet. So maybe I need right. to get on Digo next. <laughs> yeah, well, Digo isn't necessarily as organized as, as Live Binders are. I love Live Binders, you guys. I love Live Binders, as you can see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like to ask Tia what she recommends to keep Pinterest boards from being too big and unwieldy. I wish I could change the order of the pins. How do you organize Pinterest? Oh, that's a good question. Um, organizing Pinterest. Um, because that's hard. The way that the system is built, um, mm -hmm. that it's really hard to organize it. There's not really a clean cut way yet because they're just pins mm -hmm. and whatever comes up there is there. Um, you know, the boards that I have, um, you know, I have all separate boards. I really don't see a way yet, and maybe there is something out there where you can't organize your Pinterest boards, and maybe something mm -hmm. where you just have to look that up about organizing them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, speaking I'm not exactly sure, but there probably okay. is a way. I've got the <laughs> All right. And speaking of Pinterest, somebody just asked, what are Pinterest bundles? Because you did mention that. Oh, the bundles. I use the bit dot, um, it's bit, it's bit dot L-Y. Bitly mm -hmm. allows you to um, create bundles of different uh, pages. It could be websites, web tools, and you put them all in a little bundle. And that bundle, um, could consist of any pages. And what it does is shorten, Bitly is a URL shortener. So instead mm -hmm. of having those long URLs, you'll have short ones. And then you can put them all in, I think it's more like a bundle, it's just like a folder. So in that case, you can use Bitly to organize your Pinterest things that way. But okay. um, that's all it is. That's all the bundle is. It takes you to all the Pinterest sites that I like for Common Core. Okay. 
So it's just somebody also asked, can you embed the flip the flip snack? Yes, you can. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. That was the last one that I captured. Um, oh, somebody asked just now, how do you search out your sites? How do I search out this, my site? Yeah. 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 Oh, um, as far as finding all of these if you resources yourself, <laughs> instead of googling it, I live binder it. <laughs> That's my name. For oh, that. Okay. I honestly, if you go into Live Binders and you look up Common Core, or you go into Live mm -hmm. Binders and look up your content area, or you look up your testing for your state, anything you want to find out in education now, Live Binders is that place because honestly, what it does is it allows all educators like you and I to go in and create all these great, you know, things with websites, web tools, and apps that we know are great for the classroom, and so. Mm -hmm. I don't have to waste my time in Google or in another search engine where it's not useful to a teacher. A lot of times we, you know, we look at something and somebody says, oh, this is a great site, but a teacher doesn't use that site. Teachers need sites that are usable, that they can use right away, that they can easily um, integrate into their content areas. And Live Binders right. is that formula for that. So I go to LiveBinders.com, I might type in something and I'll get someone's binder and they have this cool site. I'm like, oh, that's so nice. And I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I never use Google, but if you do, make sure you're very specific in what you want. Make sure you're saying Common Core Math Interactives or Common mm -hmm. Core, you know, ELA um, questions and passages. So, you, you know, you're just being more specific in Google than you usually are. And then I just follow a lot of people. If you look on my July calendar, if you get the July calendar off my website, um, you're going to see that I have... Um, you're going to see that I have a, uh, on the July calendar, there's Edudemic that I follow, there's Free Tech for Teachers, there's I Learn Technology, there's Larry Ferrazio, I'm probably going to mess up his name. <laughs> um, he's a, um, they, they just have great blogs. These are people who have great blogs. I follow Edutopia, I look at Teachers First, and I'm sharing all of those with you. So all those things on the July calendar is where I spend a lot of my time finding resources. Mm -hmm. There's educationaltechnology.com that has great, I mean, vast resources and how-tos. Oh, I see a question that says, how much time each day do I devote to curating? <laughs> yeah. I well, almost did ask that one. I'm glad you read it. <laughs> you know, um, honestly, I'm not married and I don't have any children, so it's very easy for me to devote <laughs> my time. But right now, as of lately, I haven't done a good job. One of my parents is very ill. So I've been taking care of them and, you know, just really since April I have not done a lot of stuff. So I mm -hmm. really have to manage my time wisely. But this is what I love to do. And when you love what you do, you don't mind sharing it with everyone. And I love inspiring sure. teachers. Um, I grew up in a family of teachers. And, you know, I can't think of a better way to spend my time. <laughs> mm hmm mm hmm those are all the questions that I captured. Is there anyone with any other questions? <laughs> there were a couple of hand raising. I don't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I'm obsessed with being helpful. My mom kind of raised me like that. So, you know, and as teachers, we're all, you know, we're all willing to, you know, we're willing to help children. And our children, you know, our children are going to grow up to be. Um, the ones who take care of us, whether, mm -hmm. you know, medically or any other types of ways, financially, we're going to use those same kids that we teach today to help us later in the future, you know. So um, it's important that, you know, we do the best job that we can and that um, everyone can, you know, take advantage of that and what's out here. And I know so many teachers don't have the time because they do have families. They do have so much on their plates. So it's just my job to make it easier for them. Thank you. <laughs> I did see one final question there that maybe uh, uh, T wants to take on her own vote uh, whether you actually do webinars for districts if you if you were looking for some kind of uh, opportunity. I don't know what uh, Kate there has for you, but um, maybe you can connect. I don't know where she was going with the question. She said whether you would do it for being paid. So. 
She can follow up. I think maybe she can follow I'm just curious. Okay, thanks. Yeah, just follow up with me. You can always go to my website and contact me and email me. It's um, techwithtia at live. This is my email address. So if you want to email me, just feel free to do that um, anytime because I will do that, of course. <laughs> and, you know, um, and if you know, for all of us, I think all of us have great things to offer. You know, the Teachers Pay Teacher site, I have an account on there. And I just use it, you know, I still gave away my calendars for free. <laughs> but, you know, I think we have so much to share. And there's really teachers who have done great things with TeachersPayTeachers.com. So even you, you have great resources that you've created over the years that if you want to share them, if you want to sell them, you know, that's a great site to use for that. Well, we are almost to the quarter hour here, Tia. You've I know you could talk for the next two hours and we could sit there. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we have to come to an end at some point. Um, Saturday, uh, collect people have uh, uh, left the session already. And I know they have a great opportunity to go back to our um, live binder and your live binder to catch up and uh, test out some more of the resources that, you're sit that you've uh, uh, shared with us today. So I am going to say thank you again to yourself for a presenter, Lori and Tammy. It's been great to have you with you the school year. We're looking for a few weeks off. Um, Peggy and I will still be in the background um, plotting as to what August will look like with Kim. So um, thank you everyone in the session for being with us today. I know you're going to go away inspired to uh, do new and uh, as well as uh, great new things for everyone in your classroom. So thank you very much everyone for being with us today and have a good Saturday. We'll see you in August. <laughs>